Today on Upfront, digging in over the wall, President Trump and congressional Democrats aren't giving an inch. Will this end with the president declaring a national emergency that Democrats say doesn't exist? I'll ask two members of Wisconsin's congressional delegation, Democrat Mark Pocan and Republican Glenn Grothman. Plus, how Governor Evers is trying to work around a new law that limits his authority. Covering the issues important to Wisconsin. This is Upfront with Mike Goucher. Hello again, everyone, and welcome to Upfront. No end in sight. The partial federal government shutdown is going into its fourth week with congressional Democrats and the president dug in over the border wall. President Trump visited the southern border Thursday as he made his case for $5.7 billion for a wall. But Democrats who now control the House won't give him the money for it. How might this end, and will the president declare a national emergency over this? We have two political perspectives today, very different. In a few minutes, I'll be talking with Republican Congressman Glenn Grothman of Wisconsin, but we'll begin with Democratic Congressman Mark Pocan, who joins us now from Washington. Congressman, good to have you back on the program, and let's begin with the question. How do you think this government shutdown will end? Uh... You know, I, I think sometimes uh, our, your guess is as good as mine when we watch uh, what the president might do. You know, we thought there's a chance he might uh, have declared a state of emergency to try to find a way out of this because um, he doesn't seem to want to back off of his request for a wall. And I, I think one clarification I want to say, Mike, uh, when you mentioned the Democrats don't want to give money for the wall, let's remember the last two years, Republicans also didn't give money for the wall. In the last appropriations process, and I serve on the appropriations committee, we gave money for border security, and the Republican majority explicitly put language in that none of this money could go to any designs after March of 2017, which is when his designs came out for the wall. So even Republicans in the heart of hearts know that this is a bad idea. It's expensive, it's unnecessary, and it hurts our image around the world. So uh, just to be real clear, I want to make sure that's understood by everyone. Well, well, let me follow up on that, uh, because uh, this is the argument you hear from Republicans and from the president, that the Democrats won't budge on funding for the wall, that they will not include any funding for the wall, and therefore you can't have negotiations because one side will not negotiate. Do Democrats bear any responsibility for this, in your opinion? Well, we've actually put bills forward to reopen the government in every area but Homeland Security and then have a short extension so if the president wants to continue talking about border security, we're more than willing to do that. But there's no reason to close down everything else. There's no reason to make people's uh, refunds potentially come late. Uh, there's no reason to stop the paychecks to people who work at the airport as TSA uh, check or uh, in our, our air traffic controllers. Uh, there's no reason to shut everything down over this. And uh, Republicans, some Republicans have joined us on the those votes, but the president still uh, doesn't support that. So we're just trying to find a way uh, to get government to reopen, to be adults, and then we'll continue to talk about the wall. But again, there's no reason to have a wall. Uh, there are so many other uh, solutions that aren't 11th century solutions that would work using technology and other things that we're willing to put money into, but it would really be a, a waste of money to put it into a wall. So uh, what happens if the president decides to go in a different direction and he declares a national emergency? What do you and your fellow Democrats do about that? Well, if he does that, I assume there'll be lawsuits very quickly, and I think there'll be an injunction very quickly. But the president will be able to say to his supporters uh, that care about this issue uh, that at least he's still fighting. But, you know, let's face it, to declare a national emergency uh, over this issue, uh, he's had two years with a Republican House and Senate, and it didn't move forward, and now there's a national emergency. We all know better. Um, we're not dupes. And the president wants people uh, to think there's something going on that's not. And I don't think the public's going to buy it. Uh, I'd like to ask you, Congressman, about uh, um, sort of the, the uh, feeling that exists among some of the newest members of your House. Um, you're a co-chair of the Progressive Caucus. You have some uh, new uh, freshman congressmen uh, and women coming in, and, and they're pretty outspoken about how they feel about this president. Some have suggested that he should be impeached. How do you feel about that? How do you feel about others raising impeachment? as a possible scenario in the not too distant future. Yes, I think whenever you have a wave election, I mean, this is the biggest uh, majority change we've had since I believe Watergate. So the fact that people come in and, and have a lot of enthusiasm, wanna do their job, they're excited to uh, fix this country, 
uh, we should appreciate that. And some people are going to be talking about lots of measures to try to deal with what we see uh, this administration doing that's actually damaging to the country. So I'm supportive of those voices. I think the best thing we can possibly do is all sit down and have conversations. And that didn't occur in the last two years. Everyone just kind of let the president do what he wanted and there was no check and balance. Uh, now we're going to have checks and we're going to have balances. And that's a good thing for the country, no matter where you are politically. Specifically on the impeachment question, though, uh, how do you feel about that at this moment in time? Yeah, I think uh, what many of us have said for a very long time is the Mueller investigation has been doing an exceptional job. Uh, for four years, we had a Benghazi investigation with zero indictments. Two years, a Hillary Clinton email investigation, zero indictments. We're up to, what, 40 indictments? This is working in about 18 months or so. Uh, we should let it finish. And if something comes out of that that is uh, truly damaging about the president and in, in conspiring to work with another government or, or other charges that may be out there, then we have to deal with that as a Congress. But I think, uh, you know, you have to get the Senate to go along. It's still a Republican control. Let's uh, let the Mueller investigation do what it's doing exceptionally well. I want to spend our uh, remaining time on the Green New Deal. This is something that, that you endorse, and, and I, I'll try and describe it, but essentially it wants to move the U.S. economy to all renewable energy within about 10 or 12 years, but it also includes a, a jobs guarantee program for people who, who want jobs at a, a decent wage, $15 an hour or more. It talks about universal health care. It's a big thing, something that you've uh, expressed some support for. How do we do this as Americans? Can we afford to do something like what you're talking about? Yeah, so what the Green New Deal really is, because it's a document that has changed uh, often uh, since it's been introduced, is talking about really addressing climate change in a serious and substantive way. And, and we have not done that at all in Congress. We've had many reports just in the last year that tell us we're almost past the point of no return, that we have to deal with it. And part of the concern is what do you do with some of the jobs that are in the fossil fuel industry? You have to make sure that people still have jobs. And as me, as someone who's in the labor movement and concerned about that, I'm concerned about that. We have to make sure that we've got the, the new jobs available for people to be able to take on. And I think you know, in wind and solar, there's a lot of good jobs that can have good pay and wages. So really the what we found is that Nancy Pelosi has introduced a, a special committee to work on climate change. Uh, we want to make sure we're addressing all the other aspects of climate change from health to jobs uh, and the economy. And I'm just uh, really glad to be a part to see that issue finally move forward. Uh, that's what the Green New Deal is. It's, it's really more of a broad concept in this area. All right. Congressman Mark Pocan from the Madison area. It's good to have you back on the program. Thanks very much for being with us today. Absolutely. Thank you, Mike. Coming up next on Upfront, the Republican side. Why Congressman Glenn Grothman says the shutdown could be a defining issue for Donald Trump. And later, how liberal groups are trying to deep six the lame duck laws, limiting the authority of new governor Tony Evers. Upfront with Mike Goucher, brought to you by the American Transmission Company.